So I've been doing these game of the year videos now for about three years, since 2016, I think. And uh, in 2016, the clear standout winner to me was Uncharted 4. In 2017, the clear standout winner to me was Horizon Zero Dawn. And then Hellblade was a close second. And 2018 had two standout amazing games in God of War and Red Dead Redemption. This year has been a little bit different. So for me this year, there's been a lot of good to great games, but there's been no standout amazing games that I would say are like top tier. So um, it's it's a little bit, it's probably gonna be a controversial list for me uh, because I do have a couple of controversial games up near the top. And um, I'll give a couple of honorable mentions first. And that one of them is the Outer Worlds, and the reason this isn't on my list is because I'm, I'm I've only played about uh, six or seven hours of it. I still need to play more of that over Christmas, and I want to get that done. But I am really enjoying that. It reminds me of kind of a mixture of a Bioware game and a, and a Fallout game. So I'm enjoying it. And I wouldn't say it would be up near the top of my games, regardless of if I completed it or not, but it would definitely be in the top 10, I would say. Uh, and then the other honorable mention is Need for Speed Heat. So this just missed out. I actually really did enjoy Need for Speed Heat. I thought it was kind of a, a go back to the old style Need for Speed games, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Story was kind of cringy at times. <laughs> For speed stores, you're always kind of cringy, but um, it was fun, and uh, I really enjoyed the gameplay, and I was addicted to it there for a while. So, yeah, let me know what you think of those two games, and it's time we get into the top 10. By the way, guys, just before I do get into my top 10, I want to say this list is completely opinionated, so you let me know your opinions in the comments. I'll respect your opinions, you respect mine, or don't respect mine, I don't care if you do or not, to be honest. <laughs> Just uh, don't go telling me how I'm wrong. This is completely opinion based, okay? So that's right. Uh, this is going to be a lot higher up for some people and probably won't even be on the list for others. Uh, it's it's a game that divides opinion, that's for sure. Uh, but Death Stranding is my number 10. Now, I'm going to try to explain why this is so low on the list for me. And it's basically because of the gameplay like there's certain gameplay moments like uh, the world war moments where you go in there that are really cool i feel like it's super thrilling and actually fun but then there's other moments where i'm just like i just want this to end and and they keep making you do the same thing and i'm like please let it be over there was a, a lot of times in death stranding where i was like i i just don't want to do this anymore and that was just the constant deliveries it was just like i was doing a, a big long continuous fucking side quest and I was like I just I just want to be done with this I want to get back to the story which is where Death Stranding really shines and, and the narrative of Death Stranding really is great like the the performances of the of the characters the actors in their roles is perfect and I feel like if if I was judging this game based on story alone it would be in my top three games of the year for sure but probably top two I don't know it's just the gameplay ruined it for me it, it, it was a cycle that I didn't enjoy it was like get to the story bits really enjoy that I want to learn more about this I'm I'm really enjoying where this is going and then it would go back and it would make me deliver stuff for like three four hours without getting anything and then I'd be like I, I just don't care now I, I just want to get back to the story so uh, that was the most depressing part about Death Stranding is the good kind of outweighed the bad to make to make it a, a good game for me, but it's definitely not up near my my favorite games of the year. And uh, that's kind of my opinion. That's my take on Death Stranding. I know a lot of people have a different opinion to me. There's a lot of people that I I know that think it's complete trash and uh, it's it's garbage. Nobody they don't like it at all. And then there's other people that think it's one of their favorite games of the decade, which I I just can't understand really. Uh, it's obviously an opinion thing so if Death Stranding is one of your favorite games of the decade then go you but anyway that's enough on Death Stranding let's get into my ninth favorite game of the year so number nine is Metro Exodus and this is a game that I was kind of worried about coming up to release to be honest like just because they were kind of going in a more open world direction 
And sometimes I feel like when a game tries to switch from being uh, linear and, and story driven to a more open world scenario, it loses a lot of the things that makes me love the game. But in this scenario, it wasn't really the case. Uh, Metro Exodus done a great job of keeping the atmosphere of the first two games while also expanding upon the world, making it a little bit bigger. There was some moments where a couple of levels that I thought were a bit too open uh, and really didn't need to be. But overall, I feel like they done a great job. They kept that Metro atmosphere, which is what makes the, great, the game so great. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite Metro game. But the way they wrapped things up with the story was really nice. And I played that DLC as well, the, the Two Colonels DLC. And I feel like that was actually a really welcome addition as well. I, I really enjoyed playing that DLC. Uh, it showed a different perspective of when Artyom and, and the Colonel were... Um, we're in the lost city there. But anyway, so if you haven't played Metro Exodus, I would recommend it. Go check it out. Uh, if you haven't played the first Metros, first of all, go play them. And then come and play Metro Exodus. But um, yeah, we'll move on to number eight. I was always a PlayStation kid growing up, so I didn't play... Gears 1, 2, or 3. I did play Gears 4 on Xbox One, and I think I played a little bit of the Ultimate Edition of the first game as well, a little bit of that campaign, but I never went through with it and completed it. I uh, did enjoy Gears 4, really enjoyed Gears 5. I actually played it in co-op with my friend Tyler, who I mentioned earlier about Resident Evil, um, but it was really enjoyable playing in co-op. I feel like uh, the mission design was really well done. They were The missions were a little bit more open than previous uh, the previous Gears game in Gears 4. It was, it was open, and um, but it also wasn't too open where it was kind of annoying it was there was a little side quest to do there was small things to do but it was never like too much so uh, i really enjoyed kind of just traversing the world finding new things finding all the secrets uh, and playing through the stories while making uh, that decision at the end was incredibly tough as well i feel like i actually had a different decision to most people um but i'm not going to say it just in case you haven't played the game due to spoilers you know left or right let me know in the comments so Resident Evil 2 Remake. Now I never played the original, so this was my first experience with Resident Evil 2. Uh, and this would probably be higher up if I had the nostalgia factor, but I still really, really love this game. I'm not like the biggest, biggest horror fan. I do like horror games, uh, but I never like, was majorly into Resident Evil growing up. The only Resident Evil I had played before this one was Resident Evil 7, which I actually really enjoyed. I would say that was uh, up there um, in my top 10 favorite games of the year of 2017 when, when that came out. Yeah, I was, I was actually really excited to play this, funnily enough. And my friend Tyler, he's really into Resident Evil games, so he was kind of hyping me up a bit too. Uh, and then when I played it, I, I kind of fell in love with it. Still need to go back and do a Claire playthrough as well. Um, but I'd done a playthrough on the channel. Views-wise, it tanked. It done terrible. But I just done the full playthrough anyway because I was really enjoying playing the game. So, on to number six. Before we get into the top, the top five, this is number six. So number six, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Just before people start shitting on me, this I'm basing on the campaign. I haven't actually even played that much of the multiplayer. Uh, I did enjoy what I played in the multiplayer. I just felt like there was a little bit too much camping going on, so I never really kind of got into it. Uh, I'm, I'm still playing Titanfall 2, personally. I'm loving Titanfall 2, getting back into that because it's the free game of uh, the month, this month. Um, so, I, I, for PS Plus, that is, by the way, just in case you were wondering. But yeah, I really enjoyed the campaign of Call of Duty. That's why it's so high up the list. Not because of the multiplayer, not because of the zombies, because I haven't really delved in to that at all, personally. Uh, but let me know what you think of the multiplayer and the zombies, and of course the campaign. And uh, let's move into the top five. So kicking off the top five is Remedy's new game, Control. It revolves around uh, the FBC, a secret U.S. government agency, and uh, you play as Jesse Faden. You become the new director of the Bureau, and you have to kind of go through uh, the oldest house, which is kind of this weird paranormal building, and it, it's really cool the way they do this, but I feel like uh, the, the game does a great job in, in terms of its art direction. Uh, there's some really cool moments where you're kind of looking at a guy talking, and he's he's up in this big kind of silhouette above you. You kind of have to see it to... Uh, to get it because I'm clearly doing a terrible job of explaining it but anyway uh, I like the way the game progresses you learn more power paranormal 
paranatural, I guess, uh, abilities as you go along uh, by going through these altered world events. The character is kind of weak. That's probably the weakest part to, of the game to me is, is the characters. Because uh, I did like the story. I liked what they went with it. But the characters were... There was no real cool characters, I guess. The main character even, she was kind of meh. And, and, I, and I really do like Remedy's previous games as well. I still need to complete Alan Wake, but I love what I have played of Alan Wake. Uh, I think I have one episode left in that game or whatever. And I really like Quantum Break. Felt like that was underrated for sure. Um, it was up there in my top five games of the year for 2016. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Control. Um, if you haven't played it, go play it because I know it didn't sell well. Uh, I feel like it's worth it, especially as soon as the game is going to be on sale over the Christmas period. I'd recommend going, buying it, and playing it, supporting Remedy, because they deserve to be supported, in my opinion. They make great games, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. If you haven't played it already, that is, go play it. So, coming in at number four... So, A Plague Tale Innocence. Man, I love this game. I feel like it's super underrated. It doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, it's set in 1348. You play as a Darun girl who is a part of a noble family. Uh, her noble... Uh, I was about to say her noble family. Well, I guess that does make sense. The family is noble. But her family gets attacked uh, in at the very start of the game. And you have to run off with your brother. And it's all about surviving this harsh reality with your brother um it, it's it's an awesome game i'd highly recommend playing it it's kind of like a, a horror stealth puzzle game but all mixed into one but it, it's really great and if you haven't if you're not going to play it at least go and watch a couple of my videos on it and see what you think of the game because i feel like it's it's definitely worth checking out the bond between Amicia and, and Hugo is awesome throughout the game, learning more about their family as you go along, and more about Hugo's condition as well, which you will know about if you play the game. I'm not going to spoil anything. Maybe 9, 8, 9, 10 hours long as well. So it's kind of a game that you sit down and beat in a weekend, and you're just like, wow, what an experience. So that's kind of my take on it personally, and I feel like, uh, I feel like you should check it out. But let's get into the top three. Number three is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I called this Star Wars Battlefront when I was doing my playthrough on YouTube on numerous occasions. But Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order comes in at three. It has been compared to a kind of a Dark Souls Bloodborne style combat system. But in my opinion, it's it's not that difficult. I, I didn't play on the hardest difficulty or anything. I played on the, the normal one or whatever. I can't remember what the difficulties were called, but the normal one. And it was still a challenge. There were certain parts of it that were really challenging. Some of the boss fights especially that goddamn ogdo frog fuck that dude but i'm not the biggest star wars fan so this isn't kind of me going off my bias for star wars i'm really not a star wars fan at all if i'm being brutally honest i i haven't watched any of the recent movies i love this game i just loved this game it wasn't even the story that i loved i i feel like the story was was decent it was passable the characters were good and um, but where the game shun is in its platforming and its gameplay it's the gameplay so much fun and the platforming is, is just great i love it but i love the way they they do this the kind of metroidvania style where you come to a planet you you can't get to certain places until you learn new abilities which you will learn later in the game and then you come back to the planet once you've learned those abilities you can discover all of the stuff that you missed before uh, the platforming is where it really shines to me though i just love i love those moments the, the moment with the shio bird as well to me was great and um, that was like kind of a last guardian-esque moment that i really fell in love with and uh, I want to learn more about that Shio bird in, in the Star Wars universe now. But it's cool the way once you kind of, um, once you scan something, once you BD scan something, you can kind of just press the options button and it will tell you all about that. So if you're not into Star Wars too much, uh, it'll tell you the characters' names once you kind of, once you get into it. And that ending twist as well, I won't spoil it just in case uh, anyone hasn't played the game yet and they want to. But the ending twist was awesome. Uh, a lot of YouTubers already spoiled it. I had it spoiled for me personally before I got there, so um, I knew what was coming. But uh, I want to take a second to, to say to those YouTubers as well, you're absolute dickheads, and I hope you never find happiness in your life. I, I hate every one of you. Thank you.
Now, moving on to number two. Number two is a game that I'm sure a lot of people probably haven't played, but this is a game that I fell in love with. Uh, my friend convinced me to play this. Again, Tyler convinced me to play this game, uh, and, and that's because he's so into the Yakuza games. But uh, Judgment to me... Uh, was was more than that because it had the English dubs for some reason I can never get into playing a game with just subtitles But judgment had the actual English dubs the fully voice acted and uh, I thought it was it was brilliantly done They had some really great uh, voice actors as well and, and the characters in this game and the story in this game Absolutely amazing to me judgment 100% far and away has the best narrative of the year the twists and turns throughout this story were absolutely immense uh, I love this game with all my heart the story of this game uh, where the game kind of fell short to me a little bit was kind of in these missions that they put into the main story that didn't need to be there they were kind they were basically side quests but they made you do them they they made them a part of the main story if you're into doing side quests you probably didn't mind it that much but me personally I kind of like to just get through the main story first and and then do uh, side stuff afterwards but um that's kind of where it was a little bit of a letdown to me is like they they just slowed the the rhythm of the story up with these uh pointless side missions that uh were a part of the main story but the main story once it got going absolutely amazing loved it and uh judgment is a game i'll definitely remember for years to come and uh, hopefully they, they get a sequel or, or something similar in the future um, because I, I loved it and I feel like it's underappreciated. It wasn't even nominated at all for any category in the Game Awards um, last night. Neither is my number one game, by the way, which is actually kind of ironic. My, my top three games weren't nominated for a single game award star wars i understand because it missed the cutoff date but the the two above <laughs> i'm kind of like a i'm kind of like a, an outcast here guys so i know i'm gonna get some hate on this video but this is all opinion based and uh if you haven't played judgment i wouldn't uh just judge it based off uh off face value i'd actually go and look into it and check it out it's definitely a game worth playing now it's time for the most controversial thing of the year <laughs> Days Gone is my number one. I can already feel the tears of my enemies dripping down as they're wondering why, why oh why I picked Days Gone as my game of the year. And uh, personally, I just dug it, okay? There's nothing more for me to, to say really. That's it, that's the end of the video. Uh, no, I'm joking, but um, me personally, I can understand why people didn't like this game, and I can understand why it got low reviews. I also don't understand a couple of the reviews that I've seen because they're giving it low reviews because the the protagonist is a scruffy white male, uh, scruffy straight white male, and, and the, the biker attitude, and it's like, shut the fuck up. First of all, those reviews are bullshit, but I do understand kind of giving it like a seven, eight. Uh, I don't understand like the fives. That's way extreme to me. Um, and uh, people did have technical issues and bugs. I got this game very early. I got this game like two and a half weeks before it came out. And I experienced some bugs at the start. I waited for a patch. And once I played after the patch, it was a lot better. I didn't have any crashing issues. I didn't have any... Uh, there was a couple of technical issues with frame rate and stuff like that. But it was nothing too extreme. Uh, I didn't have problems with my playthrough at all. Um, which I'd done on YouTube. Which done really well. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed playing that game a lot on the YouTube channel. But uh, Days Gone doesn't have the best story of the year. But to me, Days Gone shines in the gameplay, man. I, I did like the narrative as well. Uh, I think it's uh, it gets shit on a little bit too much. Uh, I actually enjoyed the story. And I feel like there were some great characters, especially the puppy. The puppy's the greatest character of, of, the, of the year, I would say. Personally, in my opinion. Um, because uh, puppies are the greatest things to uh, have ever walked the earth. Um, but yeah, the gameplay is where it shines to me. I love going around finding random hordes and and just kind of taking them out. The, str the strategy that goes into taking out some of these hordes as well is a lot of fun. You have to have just a shitload of ammo. You gotta have those goddamn Molotov grenades. And um, it's just a lot of fun and it's intense that's where the game gets me it's really intense in those moments and um, when you're kind of if you're like riding along and you just kind of stop for a second and then you just hear the rustling of a horde just running towards you i love that and um i feel like the game started off 
pretty slow and, and it, it just continually got stronger as you went along uh, and that is a problem with the pacing I would say uh, I feel like it should have been a little bit more strong throughout the game and it shouldn't have taken so long to get into the the really good parts of the game because I feel like the game is the best when you're about maybe 15 to 20 hours in that's when the game starts to get like really good to me like it was it, i always enjoyed the game but it starts to get like really good like 15 20 hours into the game and that's something that uh probably the team needs to work on for for a sequel which they'll be getting for sure the game sold incredibly well and i, I feel like they laid down the foundations for what could be become a great franchise there's definitely a lot that they can improve upon on this game uh but it's just something that clicked with me personally uh, i know not everyone's going to agree with that yeah, Days Gone is my game of the year. Simple as that. I, I'm going to say this right now, though. Days Gone would not have been my game of the year in 2018. It would not have been my game of the year in 2017. It would not have been my game of the year in 2016. And that's as far back as I'm keeping track of, of my games of the year. If I went and looked, I don't think Days Gone would be my game of the year in any of the last uh, 10 years, maybe. But uh, this year, it is my game of the year because there's no game that I really felt like was amazing. So Days Gone is the best of a, a great bunch, I would say. A good bunch. The best of a good bunch for me this year. And... Um Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like. It's the best way to let me know you do enjoy the content. Um, let me know your top five, your top ten, top three in the comments down below, or just your game of the year in general. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, this is where we're going to wrap up the video. Uh, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys for more content in the very near future. If you want to help out the channel extra, you can become a member, and I'll shout you out at the end of each video, and you will be in the description as well. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next next time it's been my pleasure to serve you all right so i just wanted to give a shout out to my members at the end of each video rob thank you for being a member at the puppy level which is the 199 level and hey leanne pico daxman tiago game riot and maximus thank you all for being members at the hound level which is the standard 499 level and outlaw and sylvan jamies thank you for being uh, members at the wolf level which is the 999 level which is the the highest tier so thank you all uh, i appreciate all of you you are all my special little boys and girls and uh don't forget to keep it tight